Hello and welcome to another mini tutorial on Studio One. Uh, today's tutorial is about the metronome in Studio One. And in order to work with the metronome, you need to be working within a song. So we need a template there and I've selected the uh, VJR backing track. Any template will work. You can actually save templates with specific tempos in them. So uh, if you always work if fast rock or something like that and you want to do something other than, my default tempo is 110 beats per minute. But of interest is the metronome. And you'll find the metronome located down in the system transport tray. And it's marked as metronome. On the right you will see what looks like the old wigwag analog metronomes. And clicking on that icon will turn it on and turn it off. If you hover over it, you get a hot key, and that tells you that the letter C on your keyboard will also turn it on and off. And you can see that as I press the C key, it also does the same thing. One other thing, we'll turn this on so you can hear the metronome, uh, and click play. And we know what a metronome sounds like, so we don't need to go any further with that. We can have the metronome on, and it's always controlled and it's always available in the main outputs. This actually overrides this. So you can have the metronome on and running, yet not hear it. And we have the ability to control that at any time. Now right next to this icon is the level. And that sets the volume of the click track. So. If you click on the actual icon, it gives you a slider and you can slide it up with your mouse or down as you choose. Get it at a level that's comfortable for you. And again, it's quite loud now because when nothing else is going on, but you may want to play this as a click track during a backing track or during a recording session and you may need it higher or lower. So it's important to know exactly where that's at. Next to the metronome icon is a wrench icon and that controls how we hear and what the metronome actually does. It also echoes the status of the metronome showing it either on or off and we can turn it on or off here as well. We have three items below that marked as accent, beat, and offbeat. What it really should say here is beat one, other beats, and offbeat. Because that's exactly how it works. And as you heard when we were playing, the first beat was accented. And that is a clave stick. If We can, ch we can change that to pretty much anything you want. and you want more cowbell, you can always put it in there. Yeah, we won't fear the reaper today. So let's go back to the, to the way we had it set up prior to that. It also allows setting clicks on the offbeat. Now, each one of these is a volume control as well, so you can change the level. And as you can see, we have the offbeats turned completely off. So you can lower Or you can set it up so that all you hear is beat one. The offbeat allows you, if, let's say you're working with eighth notes, to give yourself an additional notification in between. So instead of having four beats in a measure, you'll hear eight. You'll hear the eighth, uh, the intervals. We can also control the actual timing of the metronome by both the tempo, we can change the tempo here, slow it down to 85 beats per minute. Let's turn off the off beats again so it doesn't still sound so fast. Or we can turn it up. or we can get really ridiculous. So you can see, we can control it pretty much any way that we want. 
the lower section shows us options that we have and right now it's set at click in play which means just exactly what it sounds like if you hit the play button you're going to hear it or you can turn it off here as well but it's always there if you turn this off just exactly what you'd expect you do not hear the click track or the uh, the metronome while it's the system is in play which if you're editing may be the way you want to go uh, but for recording, we have several other options. One of which is what we call a pre-count. The other is called a pre-roll. And it, each has separate, separate functions. Now, in order to really act, effectively demonstrate what those do, we need to bring in a backing track. So we'll import a song track here. And we'll bring in this one. We know what the speed is on it, so we don't have to mess around with setting tempo on it. It's 152 beats per minute. So we'll set our tempo track to 152 beats per minute. And we'll align it so that it starts at the beginning of the third measure. So we'll leave it there. Now, let's turn the click track on so that we can hear it in play and verify that our click that our metronome is set properly. Since we're working with a VJR backing track, we might want to put a put a starting point for our guitar so that let's say after the first 12 bars of the song, uh, we want to begin our our guitar solo. So what we'll do is we will actually create a loop and do a punch-in recording, which we'll explain that as well. Uh, we started on beat three, which means we had two track or two beats or two measures, excuse me, uh, before the song actually started. So if we add 12 to that, we should be at 15, I believe. And let's just verify that. Let's go to beat 13 and see if we're at the end of the track. <laughs> Okay, beat 15 it is, measure 15 rather. And we'll set a beginning for the loop. And we'll take that loop out a little ways. And again, this is something that you may or may not use. And we're not going to go into a lot of detail about this. But let's say we're going to start here at measure 15 with our solo. So we'll arm our guitar track. So we're at measure 15, and we're going to start recording. Well, that's going to be a little tough to do, because once we click start, then we've got to go back to the guitar. And if you're a one-man you know, one show, that's going to be a little tough. So what we can do with, with the metronome in the settings is we can enable either pre-count or pre-roll. Now, they're mutually exclusive. You can't use them both at the same time. And it's whichever one works for you the best. Uh, Pre-roll will play however many bars you have set up here of existing recording before it actually turns the recording circuit on. Uh, this says four bars in this case. So we're at the 15th bar. This is the beginning of the second verse, if you will, of the 12 bar blues that we have uh, going in the background. So. Now, with this set at pre-roll, it's going to back up four bars before it starts to record. So you'll see the cursor here, and we'll click record. And as you can see, it started recording at the 15th bar. It also backed up to the 11th bar and started playing. You can set that wherever you want, and it's very, very handy. That may not be your cup of tea, however. So we'll set this back here, and we'll demonstrate what pre-count does. If you select pre-count, what the system will do is it'll play this many bars of the metronome before the recording starts. You won't hear any of the previous audio. You just start with the metronome. So now if we do that, and click record, we, we will get a countdown. In fact, if we leave that open, which we can do, you'll also get a countdown right here. You'll also get the countdown right in the record button. So if we hit the record button or the, uh, 
the uh, shortcut key, it shows you how many beats. And it starts recording at the beginning of the 15th measure, just like we would expect it to do. Whichever one works for you, that's the one to use. A lot of people would rather have the pre-roll. And again, you can set that pre-roll as high as you want. So you can set it all the way back, say, 12 bars beforehand to get yourself warmed up for it. And if you set that pre-roll for 12 bars, you're going to hear the entire previous verse of the song. Just as an example. Well, you should. Oh, I see why. We hadn't reset that back to to uh, the 15th bar. That's why. So if we do this. So you've had this entire 12 bars to be able to get prepared to play. And now it's going to start recording at bar 15. Simple. One other thing that we can do within Studio One is we can actually record a click track channel. Now, what we'll do with that is we'll open the, uh, the uh, toolbar. And in the metronome setup, we have an icon marked or a button marked render. When you click the render button, what it does is it then gives you the option of timeline start to beginning, uh, timeline start to song end. Now, most of these run, I believe my template is set up for a 10-minute song. I don't need a full 10 minutes, although it really isn't going to hurt anything. Uh, but I also set the loop range out on here to the actual length of the track. So we'll tell it to render only the loop range of the track, and that'll go a lot quicker than if I left it out for the entire uh, 10 or 15 minutes, whatever the, the actual length of the track is, and click OK. Now, this is not an immediate process. You are going to sit and scare, stare at the screen for a few minutes while this goes on. But it's not as, as painful as you would think. In fact, this is going to be less than 10 seconds. And when it's done, you'll see that we've added a new track to the system. And if we go ahead and take a look at that track, expand it out, it's not really too exciting. It's just a click track. And if you solo it and listen to it, what you see is what you get. Just exactly what you do if you had. But now you have an entire metronome for the song. Uh, that you can change uh, the tempo of the song, number of things that you can do with it. But it's there to make certain that anybody else, as you're assembling tracks, has that same click track available that was made available to the beginning. Now again, something like this in the virtual jam room is probably not that much of a deal. But if you assemble songs from scratch, this could come in extremely handy. It interacts in more ways than just this, but these are the methods that you're going to probably find yourself using most of the time. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.